Well, all the people that were on the committee were very interested in trying to do right. The person who was most exer <coughs> experienced in building in the city was Ray Whitkoff. He had, uh, he had established one of the first commercial buildings in downtown St. Louis for a long time. And he was very interested, and he's a very bright guy anyway, and so he got, uh, I talked with uh, architects and so on, and uh, he talked to Gio Obata, who was a friend of his. And Gio and Ray sort of planned out what could be done in the Central West End. And uh, we, but by that time, people had pretty well gelled around the idea, this group had pretty well gelled around the idea that we would stay. We had the major investments. It would be very difficult for the city if we moved, so we decided we ought to stay. And Rafe was a champion of that, Ray Whitkoff, with the idea that if we stayed, we had to redevelop the area and ensure that it was a safe place to be and to work, and we'd need places where people who worked in the medical center could live. And uh, <clears throat> so we decided to do that. And uh, Ray took the lead, and he and Gio Obama planned a um, uh, and made pictures of how it would go. And uh, they sort of did it from a, out of their heads in sort of an artistic way. It looked very good. But uh, the people in the neighborhood heard about it and they didn't like it. But someone would come in and plan their neighborhood for them. And particularly those who were investors in the neighborhood or, uh, or um, owned uh, some of the properties were afraid that they'd lose their investments. <coughs> so uh, the there was just some uh, kickback from the neighborhood. It got some publicity. And so a member of the Board of Trustees of Washington University, who was a good friend of mine, named George Capps, asked one of his associates, Richard Roloff, Dick Roloff, who was really in the land, in the de land development part of George Capps' efforts, uh, to go and see what he could make of it. So Dick Roloff went down, he didn't draw any plans. What he did was walk the neighborhood. He visited the houses, found out what they were. He knew where the, uh, 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 the um, uh, crack houses were, and he knew where the houses of ill repute were, and he knew uh, what people wanted. and. Uh, so he came up with a more, uh, a more general plan that we ought to try and put together enough money to uh, buy some of these houses and then help people redevelop them. And that we could do that with, if we had some capital and pay interest on it. So um, we, uh, we, we then liked that idea. and. and uh, we needed to um, uh, we needed to declare to define the area so that we could uh, go to the state and get uh, 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 more control of the land, and so <coughs> we approached. I'm not sure exactly where this if when this happened, but we approached the uh, uh, the. Um, uh, Board of Aldermen to find out how to do that, and we uh, <coughs> thought about doing it, and then we uh, kind of came up with more specific plans, largely through the work of Dick Roloff, and the um, and then we uh, eventually had a proposal, and we went to the Board of Aldermen, and that gave us eminent domain through a state law, I think it was called 353 eminent domain, we gave us control over the, that particular area. <coughs> and um, we then went, we went to um, uh, Civic Progress and we asked the um, Civic Progress um, companies 
to buy bonds in our place. And we would pay 6% interest. So uh, the Civic Progress Company uh, all bought some of our bonds, which was a great help that gave us the capital to start going. They all um, immediately gave those bonds to charity so they could get maximum deduction. But we, we paid them all off. Everything worked out okay. And uh, <coughs> so that um, the, um, the people that received the, those charities that received some of the, those bonds uh, got good reimbursement for them.